Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, Hashimoto's disease is becoming more and more common. Um, it's, it's something I constantly see other people talking about having on Facebook and some of the comments people leave me and people are constantly struggling with Hashimoto's. It's very common, it's one of the most common autoimmune conditions and we're gonna talk a little bit about it today. I'll tell you about uh, what causes it, how to reverse it, what are some of the symptoms of Hashimoto's and um, how a functional medicine doctor approaches Hashimoto's disease. So my name is Dr. Philip Wu. I am a functional medicine doctor practicing in Austin, Testa, uh, Austin, Texas, and we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's, and I've got a few notes to make sure I don't forget anything. So first of all, what is Hashimoto's? So Hashimoto, as you may guess, was originally named after a Japanese doctor who discovered it and has been named after him ever since. It clusters two main antibodies that we test for into the same syndrome because basically it, it turns out to be mostly the same thing. So if you want to know if you have Hashimoto's, um, then you can, you can get your labs tested. If you have low thyroid or hypothyroid, and you're wondering why you have hypothyroid, then I would encourage you to get these antibodies tested so you know what you're dealing with. Because if it is Hashimoto's, then you have an autoimmune condition. If you have an autoimmune condition, you have a 30% chance of developing a second autoimmune condition. Now, Hashimoto's is a rather harmless um, autoimmune disease. Uh, most people don't suffer from a tremendous amount of symptoms, although many people do. So what are the symptoms of Hashimoto's? Well, since it can affect the thyroid and it can slow down the thyroid, it can really cause a myriad of different symptoms from any of the low thyroid symptoms. If you've ever Googled low thyroid, it can really include so much. The big ones are gonna be hair loss, uh, poor sleep, low energy, weight gain, especially in the unattractive areas, um, poor nail growth, uh, poor skin growth, skin turgor, just kind of everything slows down, constipation, depression. That's like your whole body is going slower. So those are all the symptoms of low thyroid, and Hashimoto's is a um, planned destruction of the thyroid gland by, the, by your immune system. So as your thyroid gland gets destroyed, you make less and less thyroid hormone. As you make less and less thyroid hormone, of course, you will need replacement and you need to have that boosted up. So the two antibodies that can be tested are from a simple blood test. You just get your blood drawn, doesn't even need to be fasting, you don't even have to go to a special lab. Any lab can do your antibody testing. You just have to get a doctor to write the order or you have to pay cash for it at any lab test now. So the two antibodies are antithyroid peroxidase or more commonly called TPO and then antithyroglobulin. Um, the most common one is TPO, but antithyroglobulin is still uh, common. It's been kind of theorized and anecdotally suggested that TPO is more aggressive or affects people more. Um, they're more likely to have symptoms. But antithyroglobin, they're both destruction of the thyroid gland. Um, one of the things about TPO or antithyroid peroxidase antibodies is it's been said that for some reason the antibodies almost block the thyroid receptors mm -hmm. and so people that have TPO antibodies they can be more symptomatic at fairly regular normal uh, thyroid levels even the, the, the um, optimal thyroid levels that functional medicine talks aim for. So the levels we aim for briefly, I've done a myriad of other videos on it, but TSH between 1 and 2 um, T4, free T4 above 1.1, free T3 above 3.2, reverse T3 under 16. Um, and then of course the, the, thy the TPO and antithyroglobulin antibodies, you wanna watch the reference range because each lab kind of has its, its various um, areas where they draw the line. It is okay to have some level of antibodies, just not too many. Um, so the, the problem with Hashimoto's and why some people get more symptoms than other people is that this is an autoimmune condition. And all, as much as it sounds like when you have Hashimoto's that you have a thyroid only autoimmunity, what you don't know is you don't know what else those antibodies are also tagging inside of your body. So what does that mean? When your body creates antibodies towards something, um, it, is, it is tagging it with a radioactive beacon. It's basically saying, aha, I found a problem, here's the problem, the immune system come and destroy it. So as you have these antibodies, they're landing on the thyroid and the immune system showing up saying, oh, there's a radioactive beacon, let's kill that part and let's destroy it. But antibodies don't identify anything special about the thyroid, they identify a 3D structure. And that 3D structure happens to be in the thyroid. Well, what you don't know is what other systems in your body are also showing that little protein that is the 3D structure that the immune system has identified. So if you have Hashimoto's disease and you've got joint pain or you've got brain fog, 
or you've got gut issues or you've got inflammation or eczema or some sort of skin stuff, all of those can be outward signs of your autoimmune condition. You need to be evaluated and someone needs to talk to you about the various symptoms of what else might be going on. But that's the idea is that even though you have Hashimoto's antibodies and they're specifically targeted towards the thyroid, they can also land in other parts of your body. And that's why you can see brain fog and all these other issues with autoimmune thyroid, even though the thyroid doesn't cause, doesn't have antibodies for the brain. It's just a collateral damage, so to speak. Um, the other thing that you can commonly see with Hashimoto's is uh, fluctuating thyroid. So one day you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, your thyroid's a little off, but it's okay. And then the next time you go, the thyroid's really off and they say, okay, let's, let's watch it one more time. And then it's normal. Well, if it's going up and down, up and down like that, that can be um, how much your immune system's attacking the thyroid and how slow the thyroid's getting and then it speeds back up. And so fluctuating thyroid function tests can be an indicator of Hashimoto's disease. As you restore and reverse Hashimoto's disease, your thyroid might get better and your levels might get better and you might notice that you're starting to decrease on medicine, uh, thyroid replacement medicine. Um, many times by the time people are on thyroid replacement, they, they can't come off of it. But one of the common things I've heard from people is, I don't want to start thyroid replacement because then I'm stuck on it. That's not entirely true. Thyroid's one of the few hormones that we can supplement with and your thyroid will continue making extra thyroid molecules. And then basically as your levels improve, if they improve, then you start going down on the medicine and your body will make more and more. Um, but many times when we're starting people on medicine, the thyroid's already quite destroyed and quite dysfunctional and may not ever return. So oftentimes when I'm starting people on thyroid medicine, I will tell them that hopefully we'll be able to get you off this, but I'm not making any promises until we get further along. Um, Reverse T3 is common in people with Hashimoto's disease, and the reason why is because um, everything turns into stress by the body. So if you have an autoimmune condition, that is a stressful condition. The body is inflamed, the body's attacking itself, and that is stress. Stress turns your, your T4 into reverse T3 instead of active T3. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Your brain makes TSH. TSH is the thyroid stimulating hormone. So that stimulating hormone goes to your thyroid and tells it to make more thyroid hormone. So the thyroid makes more T4. That's the thyroid hormone it makes. This T4 then enters the bloodstream and goes all throughout your body. And then the T4, which is mildly active, has to be turned into T3. And T3 is wildly active, much more powerful. But when the body's under stress, it doesn't wanna make T3 because T3 is active and it says the, the factories are running, keep everything going, make nails, make hair, make skin, make everything. But when the body's stressed, it wants to slow all those processes down. So instead of turning T4 into real T3, it turns T4 into something called reverse T3. Reverse T3 is like the anti-T3. Not only is it not T3, it, it actually works as a blocking agent. It blocks the real T3. So anytime you're under stress, it doesn't matter if it's marital, if it's financial, if it's metabolic stress because your methylation pathways are messed up, if it's autoimmune stress, everything comes into this one bucket and the only spigot that comes out is your cortisol levels. So your adrenal glands start taking the brunt of the problem. If your autoimmunity is going out of, uh, out of range, your thyroid is going out of range, the adrenals pick up the slack and make more and more cortisol. That's the stress response. That's, that's the only thing the body knows how to do. So getting to the root cause of the problem and fixing those root causes will kind of ease up on the adrenal glands and start make, um, help them reduce the cortisol levels. Because as your adrenals make more and more cortisol, cortisol um, is kind of an immune suppressant, but at chronic high levels, it can actually be an immune irritant and cause more autoimmunity. So getting the adrenals under control if you have Hashimoto's disease is critically important. Um, another fact that I've kind of already mentioned, but I want to hit it home again, is that 30% of people that have autoimmune, one autoimmune condition will develop a second autoimmune condition. So while your Hashimoto's may be relatively mild, they're not suffering from a lot of symptoms, if you are that 30% that develops a second autoimmune condition and your next autoimmune condition is ankylosing spondylitis, you're going to have chronic back pain. If it's multiple sclerosis, you might go blind in one eye temporarily and you might not be able to walk later in life. There are scary autoimmune conditions out there and I hope none of you ever get them, but that is a real fact and it's a fact that we, we've studied it, we've proven it, it happens. 
So I always encourage all of my patients, I test all of my patients for autoimmune disease, especially Hashimoto's, and any of them that have elevated antibodies, we're always reversing them, trying to reverse them, doing everything we can to reverse them so that second autoimmune condition never comes back, or never starts, I should say. Now, hopefully the next one you get, if you get one, is not that, and it's eczema or asthma or something simple, but there's no guarantees in this life. So the last question is, how do you reverse autoimmune disease? Um, first, I'll say that it's actually quite complicated, um, the, the treatment plan, but you can take a few take-home messages to start making changes on your own. Number one is going to be nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. If you are eating a bad diet, you cannot expect your immune system to be firing appropriately. So you have to eat a whole foods, plant-based diet. So what does that mean? That means if you buy a whole food, a whole apple, not applesauce, if you're going to buy a, a salad, you're going to buy the greens themselves. Um, and it's mostly going to be plants. When you look down at your plate, you should see 70-80% of your plate should be plants, not meat, not potatoes. Potato is technically a plant, but you don't need a bunch of rice, you don't need a bunch of potatoes, and you certainly don't need tortilla chips and things. So eat a whole foods, plant-based diet, and as much oil as you can. Olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, all of those healthy oils that you can get into your system are anti-inflammatory. Fish oils is one of the big ones that I've done multiple times. So eat as much fish as you can, try to reduce the mercury um, in that as, as much as you can because heavy metals contribute to autoimmunity. But nutrition is going to be your number one. You must remove inflammatory foods. The two most common inflammatory foods, and I won't spend a lot of time on them, gluten and dairy. If you have an autoimmune condition, there's no way around it. You just have to eliminate gluten and dairy. That if, you, if you want to eliminate it, if you want to reverse your autoimmune condition and you're going to halfway do gluten, you're just going to do gluten reduced and dairy reduced, you're not going to do it. Your, your autoimmune levels are just going to stay the same. They might go down a little bit, but they're never going to get reversed. If you really want your immune system to forget about an inflammatory food, it needs to be completely eliminated for minimum 60 days, but preferably 90 days. Now, I don't, you don't need to be a gluten Nazi and not even sniff a bagel, but you want to eliminate it as much as possible. And you don't want to go, oh, well, it's got a little gluten, it'll be okay. No, you need to remove it as much as possible. So nutrition is number one. Number two, I'll go ahead and say is the adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are regulating your immune system. If you are stressed out, if you are chronically stressed and not getting enough sleep, not, um, not taking care of your body, then your immune system is going to cause autoimmunity. That's just pure and simple. Um, number three, I'm going to say go ahead and fix your vitamin levels. Make sure your methylation pathways are running because if you're not detoxifying, if you're not anti, um, if your system's not able to properly anti-inflame things, then you're, you're not going to get anywhere. And then um, number four is going to kind of piggyback off of that is make sure you're on an anti-inflammatory regimen. I'm not talking about naproxen, ibuprofen, Motrin, anything like that. I'm talking about herbs that we know reduce inflammation. Number one is fish oil, which I kind of already mentioned. Uh, my two other favorite ones right now are curcumin. I usually aim for about 500 milligrams twice a day, but it needs to be paired with black pepper oil or biopurine so that you're actually absorbing the curcumin because they can put a ton of curcumin in it, but if you can't absorb it, it's not doing anything. And then number three is going to be CBD oil. Uh, CBD oil is made from the, the marijuana plant. It doesn't have any THC. It doesn't get you high. It's an anti-inflammatory oil. And um, for autoimmunity, I typically tell people to start with one milligrams, but we'll ramp them up sometimes 10, 25 milligrams. Just depends on their inflammatory markers. If you're not sure where your inflammation is, then get tested. It's really easy to test. Um, but you just need a doctor to write the order or you need to be able to go to an, any lab test now or somewhere that you can pay cash and order the test yourself and just pay for it outright. So that's about all the tips I have for Hashimoto's disease. It's very common um, and you may not be experiencing many symptoms from it, but you definitely want to do everything you can to reverse it and not just wait around for it. Um, inflammation is the root of all evil and Hashimoto's is by definition an inflammatory condition. So even though it's a thyroid issue and you seem perfectly fine taking your thyroid replacement, it is slowly causing heart disease and strokes because inflammation creates blood vessel disease and blood vessel disease eventually turns into dementia, strokes, heart attacks, kidney damage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd love to work with you. If you need help reversing your autoimmune disease, you're welcome to call my office or email us to get started. But if you can't come see us, make sure you're, you're following the advice I just told you and trying to attack your autoimmunity as much as possible. 
Google and look up things that are working for other people to reverse their autoimmune disease. So share this video with someone that you may know that struggles with autoimmune or Hashimoto's or thyroid issues, and hopefully we can, we can help some people around the world. Thanks guys.